Okay, in this episode, uh, I'm going to talk about delusional people, delusions of grandeur, and deluded narcissists. And, you know, I've pretty much stopped talking about the whole AD thing. You know, Scott has taken over on the AD stuff, on the AD side. Um, but people are, you know, people, so there are some people who want to know what I think about AD's recent hearing, and I'm going to give you what my opinion is on that. I'm going to tell you what I think. Uh, I, like I said, my opinions haven't changed much. Uh, I'm going to talk about Bam and her feelings about it, um, you know, because she was saying she was going to appear for AD as a star witness, and she was very, very supportive of AD. I'm also going to talk about OJ Simpson, his estate, who gets what. And somebody in the community was very... Um, let's just say, very agitated about some of the things that I said about OJ. And I'm going to explain myself uh, and just tell you a little bit more, uh, give you more of an exp explanation as to why I feel the way I do about OJ. And, you know, like I said, I don't pe think people, most people are not all good or all bad. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a bit what I think about that. And first of all, I'm going to start with something Oh my goodness. When I woke up this morning, I had no idea that Scott had written a community post about me, mentioned me in a community post. I had no idea. Um, and I found out that he had. And then I also found out he, par he apparently made some tribute song to me. And uh, this is the title of it. I've, I've included, it, included it in this video. And then uh, I heard the song. I don't know how he did that. And it was a nice little reggae kind of love song. And it was because he knows I'm Jamaican. And I thought that was so thoughtful and so sweet. And Scott, have you told NK that you're in love with another woman? <laughs> you can't have the brown bikini and the black bikini. You've got to make up your mind. <laughs> You've got to be honest with Nicole Kessinger and let her down easy. No, I'm just kidding. I also want to say that, you know, even though I do listen to Scott's live streams, um, I tend not to get myself involved in his um, live chats. I know he's got a lot of female supporters and female fans that probably have a crush on him. And that's understandable. He's cute. He's intelligent. He's engaging. He's, um, he's funny and all of these things. And I don't want... I don't want it to feel like I'm intruding on their space. You know, I give Scott his space as well. That's just how I am. That's part of my imposter syndrome. Um, and usually I can't listen to a live stream that lasts more than an hour. I kind of go for bits and bobs of a live stream. But um, yeah, you know, Scott is cute. He's funny. He's interesting. I do think he's completely obsessed with AD. And it probably a bit too much, but he will probably keep doing AD videos because look, he's met a lot of people through AD and you know, his AD videos do very, very well. Personally speaking, I think AD is a waste of time, but I'm going to go on to talk about that uh, in a minute, but I just wanted to say this first. I also want to say when I talk about Scott, you know, I mean, battery boy. The other thing I want to say is I don't agree with everything that Scott says and does, and I'm sure he doesn't agree with all of my opinions either. And some of the stuff that he was doing before I got to know his content were just outrageous. But, you know, I still love him. I, I can still love someone, but not necessarily agree with everything that they say and do. And that's just part of life. We don't always have to agree with each other. I just want to say to the Rutex supporters before I get started here, and I feel like I'm on a timer. I'm suffering from anxiety. Hope that doesn't come through too much. Um, I really, really appreciate some of some of how some of the Rusek supporters have really embraced me, even though I was involved with BAM and all that kind of stuff. And I really admire and respect that. that they haven't held it against me that I was involved with BAM um, and other people, even way back when I was, you know, talking to Justin. Um, you know, I'm not friend I'm not friendly with all of the Rusek supporters. But I have to say, I really respect and admire how some of them have forgiven me, embraced me and not held it against me that I was friendly with BAM. I really appreciate that. And I've got right now, I don't want to have any beef with any of the Rusek supporters. 
I'm not going to be friends with every Rusex supporter. And I'm sure that not all the Rusex supporters agree with my opinions. But, you know, and also when it comes to Frankie and stuff, I did some stuff that he didn't like. Okay. And I can show proof of that. He didn't like me talking to Justin. Um, and, it, you know, I've apologized and, you know, I was on my soapbox about the Claire Morgan stuff and I was on my soapbox about the, the crowd justice and everything. And I'm just going to say this. I completely, 100% understand why the Rusex, and I'm going to single out Frankie here, I totally understand why Frankie wants to go for AD because AD made up a lot of nonsense out of the Watts case to make money. And he did. He had a large audience. And the stuff that he said, most of what he said was fictional. One of the things that he said was that was completely fictional is that he vindicated Shanann because of the shadows under the truck. Now, let me just say this. Never have I once given the shadows theory any, any weight at all. Never have I once thought that the shadows theory was anything substantial. Now, I know people will say, well, Diane Hughes discovered them. I don't care who apparently discovered them. You cannot make out anything from that footage that is anything to do with shadows and making out formations. You just can't. The shadows theory is something that he grabbed onto. He got an idea in his head. He grabbed onto it and he made money out of it. And people believed in it. Okay. And, you know, going to a Zoom meeting, which is what happened with him, late, you know, recently, he went to a Zoom meeting and apparently he said that he had vindicated Shanann because of some shadows. I mean, what a load of rubbish. Um, and what I have to say about this is that I thought that the money being donated on the Crowd Justice Fund was going to be put towards the build-up of a trial that was going to take place over a period of time where testimony and, well, actually, that's not what I thought. I, didn't, I never thought a trial was ever going to happen, and I, I've said that, but I thought that that was the ostensive reasoning for the donations, that there was going to be a trial with evidence presented, with testimony, that was going to um, happen over a period of time and there was going to be a conclusion. So the 59,000 that's been raised, and obviously it went higher up than that, 110 grand is what's been asked for. What has all that money been spent on if there's going to be no trial and it's really just a very small civil claim? That's what I would like to know. But like, when I say I would like to know that this, I'm not really, I'm just saying this as a figure of speech. I'm not really interested in what happens. Um, Bam was very, very um, sold on this notion that AD should get compensation, that AD was the sympathetic, sympathetic person in all of this, and that AD had done nothing wrong, and that he had a right to discuss the case. And as far as I'm concerned, she's very deluded into thinking that he should get any compensation. However, all the money that's been raised, I thought it was the, I thought that this was supposed to be being raised. The money was going to be put aside for a actual trial, not a zoom meeting, but a trial. What happened to all of that? That's what it was built up towards. That's what I thought. What is all this money going towards? And like I said, I don't need, I don't need anyone to tell me anything like, I'm done with this. This is just a little discussion I'm having. It's a light discussion. It's an informal discussion. No one has to tell me anything. No one has to set the record straight. But I thought that all that money that was being raised was being put towards a trial. And I said many times, I never, ever thought that AD and the Ruzeks were ever going to meet in a court of law. But I can tell you, if anything were to happen that was to progress beyond this, I wouldn't be on AD's side, I can tell you that. Bam was on AD's side. She had this delusional thinking, just like AD has this delusional thinking that because he found some shadows that, you know, he's supposed to be seen as some kind of God. She had this delusional thinking that AD was the sympathetic figure. And I just don't feel that way. And has 59 grand been raised 
hoping to go towards 110 grand being raised just so AD can appear by Zoom towards a judge because that is for me is not a trial. It's not a trial. But you know, this is a very informal discussion. I, you know, if anything happens, if there's any major outcome, I'm gonna not go, I'm not gonna be on AD's side. But he's gonna play a cat and mouse game and you're going to get very little. You're not going to get any money out of AD. I can guarantee you that. He's not going to give anyone any money. So what has all this money been raised for exactly? Because I thought it was being raised for the fact that this was going to be put towards a trial and a hearing where there was going to be a testimony and evidence being presented. What has that money been put towards? And this is just a very informal question. You know, you don't have to tell me anything. You know, I've left this subject a long time ago. I'm just trying to give, you know, my perspective on it for people who want to hear my perspective. But, you know, what is going to happen here? I mean, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, AD is not going to give the Ruzex any money. He's not. It's simple as that. He won't give the Ruzex any money. So what are we building towards? It's going to be no trial. And if there is a trial and there is a judgment made against him, he's not going to pay it. So what has all this money actually been raised for? To me, the biggest winner in this seems like it's Cohen Davis. It, you know, it seems like Cohen Davis is going to get that money. But do, for doing what exactly? Because there hasn't been a trial and this has been dragged out and dragged out and dragged out like no tomorrow. The other thing I want to mention is that um, it seems like the D-man is going after Z. And we all know who Z is. Zawoki. The D-man is not happy with Zawoki at all. And it seems like there's going to be a back and forth between them. Uh, uh, Zawoki has sent out apparently to Dave, oops, said his name, shouldn't have said that, some cease and resist letters. And I know it's not cease and resist, but I'm just saying that as a joke. Um, remember when, when AD did the same thing? We have another AD on our hands when it comes to Zawoki. He's a nicer version, don't get me wrong. Zawoki is a much nicer guy than AD. Um, and the D-man was saying, and he's only talking about NK. This case is a lot more than just NK. <laughs> I think the D-man is not happy about all the attention that Zawoki is getting over covering the Watts case and, and talking about NK and uh, his so-called quest for justice. Remember Bam was saying she was going to be a star witness and people in her channel were going to be star witnesses as well. Um, she had a very skewed view, uh, a skewed view on, on everything. And, you know, I, I have said, I think that she was in decline mentally. Um, I think by the end, there was just, there was nothing good left in her. I really don't. And her sympathy for AD um, and, you know, her saying Frankie has taken his, away his only form of income. Well, I think AD took a lot of things away from Frankie, quite, quite frankly. Um, look, there's things that Frankie has done that I disagree with and I've called out, like the years and years of asking for donations. I've called it out, but that doesn't mean to say that I think that AD is a complete angel in all of this he isn't and this stuff about him vindicating shenan because he's found some shadows there are still people to this day who say it's shenan that did this which is nonsense and none of the mainstream media thankfully picked that up none of the mainstream media thought that shenan had anything to do with it none of the mainstream media and i'm not saying that we should always go on mainstream media news because sometimes the, me the mainstream media doesn't get it entirely right either but none of the mainstream media has ever thought shenan did it none of the mainstream media has ever mentioned anything about the shadows so his delusions of grandeur in thinking that he's some big deal because he found some shadows or didn't find some shadows but he's claiming that he did you know, that's that's something that um, a lot of people like him and Bam, they just said, you know, I think him and Bam are, are a lot alike. Bam was obviously more aggressive than AD. AD is a lot more laid back. And, you know, I have to say, sometimes I feel a bit sorry for AD. I mean, my exchanges with AD have been pleasant. They really have. Um, this is how I look at AD. You take him for what he is. You know that he's dishonest. 
and you just take him for what he is. I think once he was taken off of YouTube, um, once he went down, that should have been it. Closed book. But, you know, life doesn't work that way. There's an insatiable appetite to find out what's going to happen, um, what he's doing, um, what's going to be the outcome of all of this. Um, you know, my feelings and my beliefs about AD and this whole thing has still remained the same. I think that um, while I completely understand why Frankie took issue with AD, I think there are other people that have been far more extreme than AD. And I think you know who I'm talking about, that they could have gone after. And, um, you know, it's going to be a cat and mouse game. It's going to be a lot of money on both sides. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to cost a lot of time, time that could be spent doing something else. And you're going to get very little out of AD in the end. That's just my personal opinion. And it really is just a civil claim. This is all it is. It's, this is not a major, you know. Um, now, I want to talk about OJ Simpson because some people were not very happy about some of the things that I said about OJ Simpson, but I was just trying to give people a more complete insight into the relationship he had with Nicole Simpson. Um, and just because I didn't, just because I was objective when it came to OJ Simpson, people didn't like that. They want him to be, you know, they want me to be more harsher on OJ Simpson. Look, OJ Simpson was not a good person in many ways, but I don't think he was anywhere near what Chris Watts is. OJ Simpson's kids are still alive. Okay, they're alive and well. Um, to me, people make excuses for Chris Watts all the time, all the time, and say that, you know, it's Shanann's fault what happened or it's NK's fault what happened. Well, I don't agree. For me, when it comes to him, he is at the very top in terms of being in the worst category because of what happened with those oil tanks. Um, now, there is a civil case against OJ Simpson. Well, in terms of when he was alive, there, he, was, he was found liable and there was a judgment for the Goldmans and the Browns to get some money. And it seems to me, from what I've heard, that at the very least, the Goldmans are still out to get their judgment from O.J. Simpson's estate, and they're looking for that. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, because O.J. Simpson wanted to make sure that the Goldmans never got a penny out of his estate. And I still, I, I, I think things are still in the dark about his assets or what he owes to the IRS and I would expect that his children were, were, are going to get some of his money, but you know, I don't know the complete full facts of his finances and what he owed and what he didn't owe and who's going to get what. But I do know that Ron Goldman's father and sister are still looking to seek money out of OJ Simpson's estate. And who, who, who knows what's going to happen with that. But at the end of the day, OJ Simpson's kids are alive and well. And this is going to be unpopular but the prosecution did not meet their burden of proof in the civil trial they did but not in the trial before then they didn't meet their burden of proof the gloves didn't fit and the lead detective who found those gloves was found to be at the very least dishonest so they could not have found him guilty based upon what was presented in that trial, as far as I'm concerned. My mum believes he did it. Lots of people think he did it. But that's not the point. You go on what is presented to you in a court. And the prosecution didn't do a very good job. And the defence, OJ's defence team, the dream team, they were excellent. Excellent. And there's somebody in this community that didn't like the fact that I didn't paint OJ as this bad person that I was objective about him, but people are objective about Chris all the time. And I'm talking about Watts. So I can be objective about OJ. OJ wasn't a perfect human being, but like I said, OJ's kids are doing well. They're alive and well. And 
I'm not saying for one minute that OJ Simpson was a great guy and he was a he was a good person. That's what I'm saying. But there was more to the story to be told than what's been portrayed in the media about his relationship with Nicole Simpson. And that's all I wanted to do is, is to create a fuller picture. I'm not saying that OJ Simpson was any kind of saint by any means. He wasn't. But he's better than Chris Watts, I can tell you that from now.